And welcome everyone to another Smart Money Circle episode. I'm Adam Sarhan. With me today is Laron Benavine, who is the president and CEO at the Glimpse Group. Ticker symbol is VRAR. Laron, thank you so much for taking the time and welcome to the Smart Money Circle. My pleasure and good morning, Adam. Morning. So I always like to begin. Can you please tell us your story and how you got to where you are today? <laughs> that will take the whole the whole episode. Uh, so I'm a uh, kind of hybrid of a uh, kind of serial entrepreneur and kind of an executive. I've been involved in a variety of uh, businesses over my career. I kind of grew up in what I call the uh, digital tech cycle. So this is where kind of uh, kind of from the early '80s, kind of we've moved from an analog world to uh, kind of a digital world where we live in right now. And there's technologies that kind of helped us get there, kind of mobile. PC and internet kind of helped us kind of from the early days of the kind of 1980s until now kind of be in a world where we can do what we're doing right now, uh, talk to each other while kind of uh, not being in the same room. And uh, kind of in 2015, I saw an opportunity that kind of, uh, kind of a new tech cycle was emerging. And I thought that, that would be a great place for me to take everything I've learned in my career and bring that uh to, to the mix and, and position myself to kind of uh, to succeed in it. And that's where I am right now. And the obvious question becomes, what was that new invention or tech cycle? So kind of, so I've been following uh, kind of virtual reality and augmented reality during the fits and starts in the 90s and kind of seeing that it's kind of really cool, but not there yet. And in uh, 2014, 15, it felt like the, uh, the world is ready for it. Uh, kind of what happened with Oculus, kind of their kind of a DK1 and then their acquisition by uh, back then Facebook, now Meta, really pushed the uh, the kind of the, the understanding that this time it's real. And as I started to really examine the technology, I saw that again, multiple technologies are going to come together to build what I think is the uh, immersive cycle. And uh, those are kind of virtual reality and augmented reality artificial intelligence and uh, blockchain technology. And as I started kind of uh, reading deeper into kind of uh, where each one of those stand, I thought that we're in the beginning of this new tech cycle. And uh, that led me to uh, found uh, or co-found Glimpse. Perfect segue. Please tell us about your company and some of your competitive advantages. So uh, so Glimpse is a kind of immersive technology uh enterprise focused company. So we've got multiple subsidiary companies and I'll talk later if we want about kind of the, the concept behind Glimpse that are each focusing on enterprise use cases of immersive technologies uh, from education to healthcare, to defense, to marketing, to corporations, kind of in a variety of different ways. We build software solutions that help uh, enterprises kind of take advantage of still in the early going of this immersive uh, technology cycle. Got it. And then well, let's talk about your competitors. Anybody else does something similar in your space that's publicly traded and the competitive advantages, please. So uh, kind of the, the world right now, if you look at kind of the competition, there's a lot of relatively early stage companies. Uh, some of them were founded around the same time as us. Uh, their kind of uh, challenges is that this industry cycle takes a long time and funding it and building scale is not something that easily is done. One of the advantages of the model of Glimpse where we bring together multiple best of breed technology companies under one umbrella is we can generate scale and therefore we've uh, levered that to go public and be the first kind of uh, immersive technology software enterprise focus that is trading on NASDAQ and that that's kind of another advantage for us as we're kind of uh, have access to the capital markets and the kind of uh, the reputation of being a public company. Those challenges that come with that, as you, as you know, but uh, kind of uh, make sure we're having enough fun. And uh, so each one of our companies is focusing on their technology and their uh, go to market. And we as Glimpse kind of bring them all together and work uh, with them to try and kind of build that scale and support them in kind of all the things that are not core to their day to day business. Got it. Okay, perfect. And then as far as the, let's talk about risk. How do you handle risk? Talk about risk management, please. And uh, anything, anywhere you want to go with respect to risk. 
So, kind of, so that's another benefit of the glimpse model. If you're investor investing in one of these companies, usually investing in one company that's focused on one set of technologies serving one set of customers, uh, sometimes even kind of one or kind of two large customers, and that's it. What happens at Glimpse is we're de-risking that by uh, putting all those companies together under the Glimpse umbrella. When you invest in Glimpse, you're actually investing in multiple uh, shots on goal, uh, each focusing on different area. Each uh, part of the industry evolves in a different phase, in a different speed. And kind of uh, investing in, in, in Glimpse de-risks that and reduces that kind of risk for an investor. And they're investing in a sense in us, in our ability to constantly look at what's out there. If we see opportunities, we will bring those companies in uh, to the Glimpse uh, family and help kind of kind of further that investment for in, into kind of the immersive technology uh, world. Got it. No, that makes perfect sense. And then let's talk about some timeless lessons that you've learned that you'd like to share with the audience, please. Uh, nothing is easy. Uh, that's a times of lessons. Uh, kind of. Uh, so if you look at kind of basically, kind of, let's kind of start kind of digging deeper into uh, into life. Uh, when I grew up in the digital cycle, I was always late because kind of even though I started very early in it, I was young and uh, kind of when it started, I was in middle school, uh, so I was always chasing the opportunity. And I was never kind of professionally in the right place to kind of really take advantage of it. So uh, when you look at what we've done with Glimpse, we came in very, very early. And uh, the challenge of, of being early is that when you look around, the industry is takes its while to emerge. Kind of those technology cycles are usually 30, 35 year cycle kind of. Uh, so when you're coming in the first few years, you get excited because you see that something is happening. Yet the world doesn't move as fast as you want it to move. And even when you're uh, a student of history and you know that the world doesn't move as fast as you want, you still want it to move faster. Uh, so kind of that's definitely a lesson learned is to be patient and kind of and, and focus on execution and uh, don't try and rush things too far because if you rush them too far, kind of usually you'll you, you'll get to where you need to be too early, and that's not always a good thing. And how about timeless mistakes? Ooh, timeless mistakes. So kind of that, I go back to my uh, kind of my my first uh, technology startup back in the dot com days, and uh, I've I've learned the lesson that I've been uh, kind of preaching to any uh, startup uh, founder that I talk to, which is never say no to money. Uh, it's a uh, it, it it's it it sounds kind of pretty basic, right? But uh, when you're into things and money usually comes with kind of things that come with it, some hair. And uh, back then uh, we were thinking that uh, kind of .com, the world's gonna kind of basically change. And uh, we uh, started raising money kind of in, in, now when you look at it, kind of we are a bunch of uh, kids with a kind of a smart business plan. And uh, we raised about a million dollars at uh, about $9 million valuation for a business plan, which is not that bad. And we said no to money because we thought that if we did things for the next six months or a year, we'll be able to raise a lot more money at a lot higher valuation. And guess what? The uh, bubble burst, the NASDAQ crash, nobody wants to invest in anything that sounded like internet. And uh, we couldn't raise that money again. So uh, definitely a lesson learned for... Uh, any founders out there or wannabe founders out there, uh, when you get to it, never say no to money. Kind of, if uh, you're better having the money and then figure out how to use it and deal with the repercussions than uh, saying no and hope that you'll uh, you'll be in a better place X months down the road. Yeah, no, it reminds you almost of the bank. The bank wants to loan people money that don't need it, but the ones that quote unquote need oh, it. Oh, I, I've learned that lesson when I was uh, uh, when I was a kid. Kind of, I wanted to go buy a car. And uh, I, I looked and kind of the best deal was uh, with one of the rental cars. They had basically kind of a cars that were kind of used and the, the, the price was was right. And uh, I said to my dad, OK, kind of, let's go kind of can I take a loan from the bank. And we went to the bank and the bank was like, you don't have any money. Kind of why would we loan you money? I said, if I had money, I wouldn't need to have a loan. I just buy the car with my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's always the case. And so you have to take it when, when it's given, kind of, and uh, 
Uh, that's true for, for equity investors as well. They want to give it to you when you don't need it, when you need it, kind of even if you have good use for it, they will not give it to you. Human nature 101, I, I fully get that. Okay, yes. Lauren, let's talk about uh, leadership. What makes a great leader and what are some lessons you've learned about leadership that you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, so I think a, a great leader kind of has a lot of elements, but uh, if you're a leader, you're a leader of men. So you need to actually understand basically the, the, the people that you have with you and understand their strengths and weaknesses because we all have strengths and weaknesses and position them to succeed by playing for their strength and augmenting their weaknesses. Uh, so over, over, over my leadership career, which is, has gone from kind of uh, from the military to kind of startups to larger organizations to service companies, it's all about kind of the team, understanding your team, understanding the makeup of the team, how the, understanding how the team interacts with each other, and really trying to get the most out of them. Uh, there's a lot of other elements that come with leadership in terms of understanding the vision, the strategy, kind of focusing on execution, kind of basically hard work, but uh, kind of it's all about the people. If you don't get the most out of your people, kind of uh, you can do all the other things right and you won't get far. Got it. That makes perfect sense. Okay. Uh, final. Well, let's before we go that. Let's how about adversity. Since you, by the way, thank you for your service. You mentioned the military. How how do you handle adversity in business and life? What are some obstacles you had to overcome? Anything along those lines, please. Uh, so adversity is 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 really the measure of kind of basically uh, kind of toughness because it's kind of if if you're tough, you can think you're tough, you can talk tough. But until you're in situations where things are going against you and kind of uh, everybody is kind of ready to kind of to give up, it's uh, kind of you're not really measured. And kind of as you go through the cycle of starting a company from vision to a public company, you go through a lot of times where it feels like this is the end and you're basically constantly fighting a world that has its own rhythm and kind of things take a while. Kind of you want to raise investment. Sure, but it doesn't happen overnight. You want to close a contract. Yes, the other party wants to work with you. They want a thing, but yes, this person is now out and this person has no budget. So maybe we'll try in three months. So you get to see all those steps that basically are on your path to success, are mission critical for your success yet uh, they don't go your way. And you need to have the perseverance to see beyond that. And I think that's kind of what I've, uh, I've gotten kind of in my kind of mature startup mode versus my younger startup modes. Kind of as I compare myself now versus my first kind of my first startup, it's basically ability to see above that hill. So you come in and you see a hill and you're like, oh, I don't know if I can climb it and I don't know what's behind it. And kind of, and you have that ability to kind of almost like have a drone go up, see that that hill is just like a bump on the road and you need to go past it. And uh, you need to, uh, as they say in football, keep your legs moving and kind of don't stop. Because if you stop, you're done. Uh, the easiest thing is to stop because you're feeling the pain and you're kind of like losing the, uh, the the energy to keep going. But if you keep moving your legs, your body will move. And at some point, you'll kind of be going downhill again and uh, uh, keep running. No, I love that. So basically what you're saying is when the going gets tough, keep going. <laughs> yes, I, I, I like that. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it's about to keep going because and I'm a long distance runner. And when you run kind of sometimes you kind of basically you feel like kind of, oh, it's hard. And kind of the, the, the human nature is to stop, slow down, walk. And no, you once you do that, you're significantly more likely to stop than if you keep running, even if you're doing it at the same pace because you're basically struggling and you're running at a pace that you you can probably walk faster. Yeah. You change the motion and you kind of, the, the next thing is you stop. And then once you stop, the next step is to quit. So kind of, so avoid that by kind of uh, keep running. I love that. Okay. Final question for you. What is the best piece of advice you'd like to give the audience or your 30 year old self? Ooh, I like that. 
Uh, so for my 30 year old self is understand kind of basically kind of understand the direction and just keep going kind of, uh, we try to keep kind of my, my first startup alive as long as we could, but, uh, I, I still think that if I were there with the vision and the understanding and the maturity, not to take every kind of, uh, hurdle as something that cannot be succumbed. then uh, I think that's that's probably it. And uh, for people out there listening, kind of believe in what you're doing. And if you believe in what you're doing and you execute on it, you will make it. It's just having that belief. If you don't believe in yourself, other people won't believe in you and then you probably won't make it. So uh, it all started with belief. I love it. Well, Leron, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been absolutely fantastic. Hopefully we'll have you on again soon. Uh, looking forward to it and uh, have a great day.